Hi everyone. A couple of years ago, I did a number of tutorials on pipe connections, and one of them was about connecting pipes that have different diameters. And what you can see here is an example of such a connection. And for this one, I received a request asking me, how would you connect pipes at an angle that is different from 90 degrees in order to create objects like trusses, for example. So in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we can connect cylinders at an angle other than 90 degrees to create a truss shape. So let's get started and create a connection between two cylinders that is different from 90 degrees. And you will see that it's actually pretty easy. And by the end of the tutorial, you will probably be wondering, why didn't I think of that? It's really simple. So let's get started. The first part of this tutorial will be pretty much exactly the same as the one we did in the video on connecting pipes at a 90 degree angle. So let's go ahead and start with a cylinder. I'm going to change the orientation to minus X. And like in that other tutorial, we're going to use a number for the rotation segments that will make sure that we get a reasonably clean transition between the two objects. So I'm going to switch that to 28. And we won't be needing any caps, so I'm going to switch those off. And if you've watched that other tutorial, you already know that my preferred way of creating the connection is by creating the transition or the geometry for the transition first. And this is just because it gives me more control over how that transition looks. You could also just do this with a Boolean operation. And the work, I guess, will be pretty much the same. But like I said, I feel like doing it this way will give me a little more control over what I'm doing. So that is my preferred way of creating these kinds of connections. Now you've seen that I switched the orientation of that disk to minus Z and the disk segments to one. For the transition, I want a radius of 30. And that's going to be the radius of the actual cylinder that we're going to create. If I go to my front view, hit NH on the keyboard, so I can see the wireframe. We're going to need a rim around that connection here, which is going to be our transition. But first of all, we need to adjust the rotation segments. And for this one, I'm going to use 16, and that will give us something, or that will give us an object where the edges are pretty close to the horizontal edges on the cylinder. So that's the first thing you always want to do. And depending on the radius of the cylinder and the number of rotation segments you use, you will have to make adjustments regarding the radius of either of these objects and also uh, with respect to the rotation segments that you use for the two objects. It, depending on how you do it, it's always a little bit different. So like I said, a 30 is the actual radius for the cylinder we're going to create. And in order to create that rim, I'm going to increase the outer radius of that disk to about here. And I'll put it about halfway in between this horizontal edge and this horizontal edge. And the reason for that is because once we make that connection, we will get a quad here. So we have one, two, three, four edges. And also we want to make sure that we don't get this point too close to this edge. Because the closer we bring this point to this edge, the more we will get pinching. And that's why I want to keep a certain distance between the edges if I can. Okay, so that is the radius I want to use for that disk. Let's increase the, out, uh, the inner radius, sorry, to 30 and that will give us uh, something like this. And you already saw that I moved that disc in front of that cylinder, and we need to do that in order to be able to project the geometry onto that cylinder later. Before we do though, we need to make the disc editable. So hit C on the keyboard. And let's go to point mode. I'm just going to delete all of these points here. And next what I want to do is 
line these points up with the horizontal edges on the cylinder. And I also prefer to do that before I project the geometry onto the cylinder. And the reason for that is because 3D snapping in the orthographic views usually doesn't work as expected. So it's a good idea to do that before we project the geometry onto that cylinder. Now, if you hit the P key, you can bring up the snapping menu. If I undock that and switch snapping on, you can see my settings here. Now, in this case, we need edge snap. So make sure that is switched on. And then I'm just going to move these points straight down and snap them to the edges on the cylinder. And let's switch off snapping again. And I'm just going to move these points out a little bit and try to get a more even rim. So something like this should be fine. Now let's put this into symmetry objects. And I'm going to switch the second one to XZ. Let's make this editable. And now we can go to character commands and project the object onto the cylinder. If you click on this cogwheel here, you can see the options that we have. In our case, we need the default one, which is points to surface. So let's just hit OK. And you can see now we've projected this geometry onto our cylinder. And as for that cylinder, we need a little more geometry here. I'm going to increase the height segments. So I'm getting this edge loop here at the center. Let's make this editable. And we need a little more geometry. So in edge mode, I'm going to select these edges here and I'm going to bevel these. And let's do something like this. And I only need these edges so I can delete the polygons in between. We also need to increase the subdivisions to one because I want to keep this edge loop here at the center. And we will also need some more geometry on that cylinder because we need to have edges here and here. And I'm just going to switch the display to constant shading lines so I get an evenly lit scene without the reflections. And what I'm going to do to add these edges is I'm going to use the plane cut tool. And for the plane cut tool, I'm going to switch the plane mode to world and the plane to YZ. And I also need snapping to points and then I can snap to this point and to this point to create the edges that I need. And now we can go to polygon mode. I'm going to switch off snapping again and I'm going to delete all of these polygons here. And I'm going to optimize the object to get rid of the points that are left when we delete the polygons. And now we can select both of these objects, right click and use connect objects and delete. And in order to close that polygon hole, I'm going to use the bridge tool. So B for the bridge tool. And I'll do this in edge mode. We can connect these edges here. And a little bit later, we also need to remove the n-gons. And I already know that I need more geometry in order to get that to work without having to do any additional work. And once we've done this, we can use close polygon hole to close these two polygon holes. And in polygon mode, we can right click and use uh, remove n-gons down here at the bottom. So this is exactly the same geometry that we ended up with in the previous tutorial. Now this kind of transition will work perfectly fine if we have a 90 degree angle. But what we want to do today is a connection where the angle is different from 90 degrees. And in order to do that, we'll have to make a few adjustments. And it's actually pretty simple. Let's go ahead and add another cylinder. I'm going to put this to minus Z 
change the segments to 16 and the radius to 30. So this is basically what we would end up if we did a 90 degree connection. But like I said, we want to have an angle here. Let's maybe do 40 degrees. And in the top view, I'm going to use snapping here and move that cylinder and snap it to this point here. And you can already see why it's not working. Here at the front, we have a circular shape, but at the position where we have that transition, it's not going to be a circular shape, but an oval shape. If I hit an H to switch to wireframe, we can see things a little bit better. So that means we need to make a few adjustments to our cylinder here. And I'm going to keep this one as a helper object. And with this one, I'm going to use close polygon hole and I'm going to close that hole here. And that will give us this ugly N-gon, which also is non-planar. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to extrude it out a little bit and I'm going to scale it down to zero and then switch on enable axis and snapping and I'm going to put the object axis here. Switch off enable axis and I'm going to snap this end on to this point here and rotate it 40 degrees. And let's go to the top view and I'm going to move this out and let's hold down shift and let's do something like 300 maybe. Let me just undo that. So holding down shift, I'm going to move this out to 300, something like this should be fine. And you can already see that this is not going to work. This shape here, this extrusion tapers down towards the transition. So what can we do to get the shape that we need here at the transition. Well, it's actually really simple. Like I said, let's get rid of this end gone. And I'm also going to delete the bottom half of this object, like so. Let's go to the top view and switch on our helper object. And all we need to do is move some points around. And for this, I'm going to use snapping. And for now, I'm just going to focus on the inner row of points here. And we can select this one, move it over and snap it to the edge of the helper object. And I'll continue doing that for these edges here of these points. And over here, we need to make some bigger adjustments. So let's go ahead and select all of these points. And again, focus on the ones on the inside of that transition here. And I'm just going to move these over roughly and line this point up with this edge. And then we can deselect these points and move the rest over to here. Deselect these two points, move these ones over to about here. And deselect these points and move these ones over a bit to about here. And then I'm just going to select all of or these points one by one, and I'll just line these up with the edges of our helper object here. And that's all we need to do. Let's switch that off again. And if I go back to my perspective view, you can see that we have a nice and round shape again, even segments. And now we could adjust some of these points to get a more even transition here. And I'll just move these over. And we can only move these horizontally because if we move them up or down, it's going to change the circular shape of that big cylinder. Okay, so maybe something like this. Let's move this one over a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to select all of these points all around the object and move these over a little bit to here maybe and same thing here. Let's grab all of these ones. And move those over a bit. OK, 
Okay, so something like this should be fine. And I'm also going to select all of these ones. Again, making sure that I'm selecting all of these points around the object and in the top view, I just move these over a little bit just to get a nice and even spread of polygons here. And if you wanted to, you could select the points here and make these more square, which would help if you wanted to add additional details. But the problem is we're going to create a ton of geometry. We need a control edges. We also want to have a nice and even spread of the geometry across the object. And that means we'll have to add a whole bunch of edge loops in order to make that happen. So I'm going to keep these elongated and get a slightly lower polygon count. Let's switch to edge mode. And for now, I'm going to select these two edge loops here and use dissolve to get rid of those. And now we can add a symmetry object, switch the mirror plane to XZ, and I'm going to make this editable. Okay, so that's looking good. If I subdivide this, you can see it's looking pretty horrible. We don't have an even spread of the polygons. And also if I render this, you can see we're getting this pretty sharp transition or this crease here in this position. And that's because we have a very steep angle here. We don't need to worry about this though, because as soon as we add more edges, this problem is going to be solved just by adding more geometry. We could also increase the fong angle a little bit to alleviate that problem. But like I said, it's, it's mainly because we have this steep angle and not enough geometry yet. So I'm just going to undo that. And um, let's maybe make this transition a little bit softer. I'm going to select all of these edges and use the slide tool to slide these over just a little bit, something like this. Okay, because we want this to, to have more of a welded look and I don't want this transition to be too sharp. Now, if you want to, you can keep a backup copy and as a matter of fact, there's something I forgot to do. So I'm going to control C to copy the object and I'll just go back to, um, to here, because we actually want this piece where we can do a 90 degree connection. And this is going to be our end piece going to hit control V to paste the other object. So this will be our end piece. And I'm going to switch that off for now. And then I'm going to copy this one, go to model mode, and I'm going to rotate the copy 180 degrees this way and 180 degrees this way. Let's go to the top view. And I'm going to roughly move it into position here. And then I'm going to switch on enable axis and snapping and I'm going to move the object axis to here, switch off enable axis, and then we can snap this to here, select both of these objects and use connect objects and delete, optimize and let's dissolve these edges here. And in model mode, I'm going to use axis center to center the axis like so, and then character commands and reset position scale rotation to put the object at the center of the grid. And now we can go to edge mode or point mode and select these edges here and scale them to about here. And then I'm going to select these edges and scale them down. And let's put them at 270 maybe. And I'll do the same thing over here. 
scale these down and move them to 270. And I'm going to use axis center again to move the axis over and then reset position scale rotation to put it at the center. Now we need a symmetry object. And let's go ahead and make this editable. And for now, I'm going to dissolve the edges at the center. And if you want to make a backup copy, And the reason I'm doing that is because now we're going to add a ton of geometry to get an even spread of the polygons here. If you don't want to use that many polygons, uh, you might want to keep this lower poly object and just need a couple of edges to hold the shape here and not use as many edges in between in this area here. Okay, but I'm going to do more like a production type of mesh where I have even geometry all over the object. So let's use the ring selection tool and I'll start down here and I'm going to use edge cut. And I'm going to add a lot of segments here, make these about the same size as these polygons here. And I'm also going to do this in this area here. So let's do something like this. And let's continue over here. And do maybe something like this. And we also need a couple more edges here. And let's do maybe two segments. And we'll also need more edges here. Let's do something like this. And yes, that's a ton of geometry. But if I subdivide that, uh, you can see we're now getting something that is looking very nice. We have a very nice welded transition. And also you can do anything with this object, you know, bend it and twist it. And it will work if you turn this into a, a curved object as well. So it's a lot of geometry, but this is how I would do it to get this production type of mesh for this truss shape here. But if you don't want to do that, like I said, just make sure you add enough geometry in the areas where the transitions are in order to make sure that you can hold the shape and just add a few more edges in between to alleviate the distortion that you will get when you subdivide the object. Okay, so um, that's basically all we need to do here. And if I go to polygon to, to model mode, you can see that the object is 1080 centimeters. I'm going to copy that and let's go ahead and put this in a cloner and paste 1080 in here. And then you can add as many copies as you want to get your truss shape. I'm going to do four for this one. So again, maybe let's keep a backup object of this, just of the cylinder. And I'll switch that off. And I'm going to put the cloner in a connect object and make that editable. And then we can add the end piece. I'm going to make a copy of that. And move it over. And let's go to the top view. I'm going to put the axis over to here and then use snapping and just snap the object into place over here. And let's go ahead and select these edges here and extrude them out and scale them down. And I'm going to make another copy and rotate this around 180 degrees. And I'm going to move it down and snap it into place here. And then we can select 
all three of these and use connect objects and delete optimize the object and let's go to edge mode and I'm going to delete these edges here and maybe these ones as well same down here yeah well actually it was not such a good idea to add all of these loops because now we have to remove them again because I want to make sure that we get you know that even distribution of polygons again so I'll just double click on each of these edges here to select the entire loop so let's dissolve these and this one as well I think no not this one because we have that transition here right no actually we can get rid of this okay so let's also delete these two and then again I'm going to ring select these edges and use edge cut to get an even distribution of the polygons here and let's go ahead and select these edges and again use edge cut to create additional loops and over here I'm going to do something like this and of course we need to connect the object over here and in order to do that I'm just going to select these edges here change the size to zero deselect everything and optimize and again use edge cut and create additional geometry here and let's see well I think I'll just let's do a short truss and what I'll do here is I'll just select all of these points here and delete them and I'm going to move the object axis and put the object at the center then use a symmetry object Okay, and we can put this in a subdivision surface object and there you go that is the truss object and there you go so this is how I would do connections where the angle between the objects is different from 90 degrees I hope you found this tutorial useful thanks for watching take care and I'll see you again soon